welcome today we will discuss failure mode and effect analysis this will take some time uh, it is not possible to complete by half an hour so uh, it will require more than one hour so that's why what happened today in next 20 minutes of time uh, i will just discuss that what is failure mode and how to identify the failure modes and and obviously uh, uh, the methodology for failure mode and effect analysis i'll give you one example so the source is the published risk assessment by komamoto and henle and uh, um, i'll show you one example uh, that example uh, we have taken from the net internet source and uh, just uh, could not find out the um, this one the exact uh, source but it's a very good example and we'll try to find out figure out where from it has come from and then we'll definitely include um, add here and we'll mention so now what is failure mode failure mode and effect analysis is a very very important hazard identification and analysis technique which is uh, used very much in in partic particularly in equipment failure case so if you recall my earlier lecture i just told that that hazard can be process related hazard can be equipment hazard or machinery hazard can be human hazard software hazard so like this now if i say process means a continuous process kind of things if hazard is is king the in this case then for equipment and machinery related um, that hazard analysis case fmea is a is is the king not the queen by saying this, I am not saying that FMEA will not be used for under process or human or software cases or vice versa that has cannot be modified to use in equipment related analysis. It is possible, but more often what happened, we use FEMA when we talk about uh, the equipment related um, hazard analysis or hazard identification. Now, in failure mode and effect analysis, one of the important uh, concept is called failure modes. So, we will slowly uh, we will first discuss failure modes then go we will go slowly to the effect and the causes and finally, the methodology or procedure that will be adopted uh, to, to conduct the failure mode and effect analysis in today's lecture. Failure modes mean the ways that an element of a system can fail to achieve its intended function. Please keep in mind that intended function is very important one every time we are saying because either a system, subsystem or component whatever we have basically developed these are these are for certain purposes. So, that is what is the intended function even a component for a, a valve it has intended function. So, now valve can fail, a switch can fail, a motor can fail, human fail. So, there are like process fail, equipment fail, human fail, software fail. So, everywhere there is a way it will there is a different ways it will fail. Okay. So, every way is a mode. So, that is why the ways and element of a system can fail is the failure modes. For example, switch all of you know electrical switch. So, switch you want to close it but it remain open that is also failure mode and on the other hand suppose you want to open the switch but it is in close mode so similarly something partially open partially close maybe something more you can add here now motor motor fails to start fails off while running start prematurely operates too long operates at degraded torque or rotas rotational speed these are the pump motor failure mode. If you say pump, it will be similarly pump failure mode will be also similar because pump itself also a motor. Now, human failure mode, human 
fails to perform a given task. Perform task in wrong sequence, performs an additional task, performs the wrong task. Okay. So, perform the wrong task. You are asked to um, you, are, you are asked to clean uh, clean the floor and suppose you have you have cleaned the outdoor instead of the in floor indoor. So, something like this wrong task you have performed. Additional task I ask you to prepare a PPT for FMEA and you have also added in between FTA and you, you may made the, my job complicated because these two are not the same thing. So, perform task in the wrong sequence obviously, if you if you if you know that suppose you are doing a project and it has different activities to be performed and those per activities per to be performed in sequence there is some precedence relationship. If, if you do not follow the precedence relationship and then either you will not be able to do the work or even if you do the work that will not be useful. So, in that sense uh, uh, there are many uh, many other examples which can be quoted here that the wage a component or an element of a system fails that is what is failure modes. Suppose, I, if you see in PHA we have discussed the missile, missile system S missile system and we have, we, have, we, have, we have given you that the missile head. So, you have seen that the, um, the missile head how it fails different uh, different uh, uh, structural failure also we have discussed that is that is uh, failure mode of that missile head. Similarly, in case of pump uh, pressure tank system, there the uh, that tank rupture can be a failure mode. Okay, although it's a huge one, it's not a simple one. Your tank rupture causes lot of things. That is also failure mode. So there can be a relation between failure mode and deviations, but usually we do not go for this kind of relation. We we use in different context. Hazob and FME. In Hazob, more of process parameters, their deviation, and in FME, it is more of the hardware part, every component or the part of a component, how they are going to fail, and that is what is what is basically discussed here. So, the if you want to do FME, you have to first uh, break down the system uh, up to component and part level. That is very very important because FME used usually at the component level. So, there are three kinds of approaches one is hardware approach, bottom up approach. Bottom up approach means when every component of the system must be reviewed. Functional approach hardware cannot be uniquely identified may be the issue or system complex complexity requires progressive analysis. What happen if we go for suppose in the pressure tank system. So, a component wise when you go you have you have already seen that component wise the pressure tank, pressure gauge, relief valve, alarm, the pump, the timer, the contact, the switch, the electric all those things. But you see pump is getting command from the circuit. So, there is some relationship. So, many a times what happen if we consider only one component then the dependent relationship with other component of the system may not be understood properly and in that case your, your, your analysis may not be that strong enough from analysis point of view not from identification of failure modes point of view. So, that is why it is written that system complexity requires progressive analysis. Okay. So, there may be situation when you require to go for functional uh, breaking up. Now, the last one is that many a times what happens sometimes you combine the two so that hardware approach and your functional approach or bottom up approach or top down approach and then you make a hybrid approach. Maybe you divide the system into subsystem for some subsystem go for hardware bottom up approach somewhere top down functional approach because it, it is necessary to do to, to have better understanding of the failure modes in, in a system. So, this is what is our 
hardware approach that is bottom up approach you see what happened a system can have sub system then can have sub sub system then in this sub sub system com different components and finally, parts. So, we are interested in failure modes here you consider part 1 part 2 part 3 like this every part and find out how this part will fail how this part will fail how this part will fail then this three part in combination will talk about failure mode of the component. Now, for this subsystem these two component failure modes will be subsystem failure modes and then um, ultimately these two subsystem failure mode will be the sub subsystem failure mode will be the subsystem failure mode and this set another failure modes will come from this set and finally, you will have a big list of list of failure modes of the system. So, it may so happen that all the cell failure modes component level failure modes may not lead to the uh, part level failure mode may not lead to component or may not lead to subsystem level failure mode. So, when 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 uh, we do component hardware breakup we basically are interested to know at the bottom level what are the failure modes and the detail uh, modes we want to identify. Now, the relation between that when the sum of the failure modes finally, leads to the higher level fa failure uh, that is a different uh, issue. Okay. Then you see that what is the uh, approach mm, with reference to that hardware approach uh, an example the example is here uh, we are talking about an example is it is a compressor air system what is actually here is the receiver actually I can say it is similar to the pressure tank that what happened it stores the compressed air and this compressed air is used by line of pneumatic equipment. Now, this compressed air it, 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 it is to be with a certain pressure range and it should be moisture free and as a result there are two other function F 1 is provide compressed air with the DGR pressure level and F 2 it remove the moisture from this. So, that means, the, the air what will be stored here it should be of 100 psig pressure as well as it is moisture free because this equipment require the air with this pressure and moist free air. Our if this is basically what is the total system. Now, I will show you the hardware approach of breaking it down. This example we have taken from some sources and uh, um, that is what I say that uh, I could not locate this source. If anybody know please uh, mail me in the discussion that what is the source then so that next time I can add this. So, now what happened if I go by the hardware approach bottom up approach my totality is compressed air system you see that compressor subsystem drying subsystem distribution subsystem three things air coming to the compressor compressed to required pressure then dry dry coming to the dryer it is dried then going to the distribution system in the receiver and going to the pneumatic pneumatic machines so compressor system have intake filtration subsystem compressor subsystem drying system there is no further subsystem straight away the uh, that component level and distribution system also component level. Now, intake filtration subsystem rain cap filter pressure gauge piping compressor subsystem like this compressor control loop relief valve piping and these things. So, you can see this thing these things if we go suppose rain cap filter pressure gauge and piping you see this is the case. So, rain cap filter pressure gauge and obviously, all those piping this is basically a uh, uh, that intake intake system ok uh, intake filtration subsystem. Now, if you say compressor subsystem compressor control loop relief valve piping you see compressor subsystem that is compressor pressure control relief valve piping relief valve and pipelines are there. So, in that way in that way the breaking up has taken place. So, you are breaking down the uh, total compressor subsystem into component. Now, you will be interested to know 
the failure modes of these many components okay so let us see that what are those failure modes i i am just showing you for one sub system which is basically compressor sub system and you have already seen that in compressor sub system what are the component one is compressor pipe pressure control relief valve now fme is also a team game so your team will have design knowledge system knowledge hazard knowledge and obviously experience that also counts so what happen you if you have design knowledge and hazard knowledge all those little knowledge then what happen you will be able to find out that what is happening there what kind of failure modes that could happen there one is the ex compressor case external leak external rupture fails to start fails of while running start prematurely operates too long operates at degraded head and flow performance too fast and too slow so similarly pressure pipe case external leak external rupture plugged pressure control fails without with no output signal fails with low output signal fails with high output signal fails to respond to an input change spurious output then external leak external rupture plugged fails to open on demand fails to reset opens prematurely close prematurely so all those things related to relief valve okay so this is this is very exhaustive uh, uh, if you not exhaustive it's a very good uh, list and this i have taken from that source and uh, it's I, i have developed this long back so um, i'll tell my scholar to find out the resource because i i tried a lot but i could not get it so now what i mean to say here that once you have done the that breakdown system breakdown structure so uh, you have gone up to the component level for every component you find out the find out the failure modes then a list of failure modes will be identified once you have that list you can do the uh, anal that failure mode and effect analysis okay so i will discuss this failure mode and effect analysis so i hope that uh, you you got this may, let me repeat this system breakdown structure that this one bottom up approach and top top down approach this is bottom up approach then this is the example i have given you and this is what is basically the um, with reference to the uh, compressor system and then we have seen that compressor particularly this one the compressor sub system i considered and these four component their failure modes are identified okay so similarly if you take any other system your own system you take and find and break into this manner uh, then what and finally find out all the components and then see that what the failure modes most of the time the failure modes will be available in open source okay so maybe from reliability handbook also you can find out the failure modes uh, otherwise your team must uh, be able to find out the failure modes okay so once you have failure modes then what is the step the methodology means doing failure mode and effect analysis what is the methodology identify all failure modes like if you are interested to develop the do, go for failure mode and effect analysis of the compressor sub system then there are four components and for every component all failure modes are identified so a list is available now consider a potential failure mode maybe from your from your experience or the team will find that even though there are 50 such failure modes maybe maybe 20 failure modes are potential modes other may be trivial so you consider a potential failure mode then three important things you have to do one is if failure occurs in that mode what is the what is the effect 
what is who, what is the consequence that is going to have so this we will talk about severity for example in the in this case in this particular case so if you if you if you see that ex, external rupture so the compressor rupture what will happen will not create a huge thing so in that case severity will be high other cases severity will be low you getting me so that means for every failure mode if that failure mode happens what are the effects that you identify from those effects you will be able to determine the severity level we will discuss in the next class the different scales to find out the uh, define severity probability and consequences ok then the second one that for the every failure mode you find out the causes why that failure mode happens so if the failure mode occurs what will happen that is the effect why that failure mode occurs that is the cause the cause will give you the probability cause will give you the probability effect will give you the severity cause will give you the probability but in addition another important one which is not considered in traditional risk analysis when we say risk equal to p cross c probability and consequence means these two probability and severity but the other one is important one is the detectability failure modes have happened a component failure happened but is your system is able to identify that that failure mode has happened so this is very important and that is known as the detectability of the system there is an external leak there is leakage of gas let it be the valve is choked but is it so that our your system is configuration is such that you are able to detect that that particular failure mode has occurred so that is possible when you identify the current condition and design verification process so if you if you if you do this what you will find out that you will understand what is the detectability of your system towards the failure mode occurrence so this lead to detectability so that means then we are calculating then we are calculating risk but not in this formula we are saying rpn means risk priority number priority number rpn so instead of r we are writing rpn which is multiplication of these three that severity probability and detectability for every failure mode you find out this rpn now when we discuss the scale for detectability severity and probability uh, you will find out uh, that how how this multiplication is done why this multiplication is done also ok so that part will be discussing later but suppose you have given a given uh, a scale of severity probability and detectability separately for a particular failure mode all three values are there then you will find out the rpn for this failure mode so what happened all potential failure modes rpn will be identified and then what happen in between what you will do you will see that whether rpn value is significant or not means it is high or or it is beyond certain value so that it is it, it is it is a potential one it should be considered then what happen you basically talks about action point for improvement like in hajo what you have done you say once the causes consequences are known you are basically recommending something so that this thing will not happen similarly for every fa potential failure modes you have to identify the actions for improvement whether the either improvement in terms of probability of occurrence in terms of severity of the failure modes in terms of detectability when the failure modes has occurred so in in either of the three or in combination you tell what is the actions to be taken and then what happen for every failure mode when you do you just say that whether any other failure mode left if yes take the next one and repeat this process if no document this 
So, what is the FMEA documentation that also we will discuss in the next class. So, this is what is basically uh, basically the methodology or other way I can say that failure mode and effect analysis. I am not giving you any example of all calculations, but we will be discussing those things in the next class. And for the timing, you please understand that failure mode and effect analysis is a very useful hazard identification analysis techniques technique and it is used almost everywhere, but it is more suited when we are talking about equipment or machinery related failure. It is comparable to other analysis like HAZOP and, uh, and it is it is also uh, applied in other areas apart from safety like in case of quality uh, that six sigma and all other cases even in the business risk analysis also this uh, failure mode and effect analysis is used. You should not forget that it is a team game you must have the from safety engineering point of view must have the design knowledge you must have the hazard knowledge you must have experience gathered in terms of doing failure mode and effect analysis or in terms of uh, the failure modes that what already has take, uh, have taken place and then you you required to calculate uh, the severity the probability and detectability for all the failure modes and then you must compute the rpn and through rpn only you will be able to prioritize the failure mode and for every failure mode potential failure mode the actions must be suggested the actions can be in terms of reducing severity reducing probability and improve in improving detectability thank you very much